So I'm here on Mont Gros uh, at the Observatoire de Nice uh, on a beautiful March, early March day with Astrid Lambertz, who is uh, originally from Belgium. She's an astrophysicist, but not only that, she is a gravitational wave astronomer. And uh, Astrid, you are looking particularly for massive black hole, uh, stellar mass black holes that are potentially merging. Uh, tell us about tell us about that and where these stars are initially originate. They're O-type stars, correct? Yes. So black holes are the remnants of the most massive stars. Stars that are actually quite rare. And so we've been seeing the mergers of black holes with the gravitational wave detectors like LIGO and Virgo. And we've actually been detecting rather massive black holes, about 80 times the mass of the sun. And uh, regular stellar physics doesn't really know how to make these black holes. And we think that they could be what we call second generation mergers of black holes. We have two black holes that merge. They make a rather massive black holes. We do that again a second time. And these two things can merge again and make a really massive black hole. And you are part of the Virgo LIGO Kagura. Kagara? Kagura. Kagura. Okay, mispronounce it. The Japanese portion of ground-based gravitational wave astronomy. Uh, and then ESA has a spacecraft called LISA. It's fin finally going to launch in 2035, but that's 10 years away. But so you're doing exciting science now. Um, and tell us, an O-star, you're looking for O-stars, which are the largest uh, hydrogen-burning stars that we know that can be made. And they only last a, a million years before they do a core collapse supernova, is that correct? Yeah, so O-type stars are the types that are the type of stars that if they are massive enough can turn into a black hole it's actually one star out of 10,000 and because they live extremely shortly there's not many of them at birth well it's actually quite hard to, to find any information and to find any of these stars so I'm using the black holes they leave behind to find out more about these really extreme stars and um, are there we have we detected any of these massive um, black hole mergers inside our galaxy no, so, so LIGO and Virgo uh, aren't really expected to detect any mergers from our Milky Way just because the event rates uh, are so low. We pr don't predict, we would have to be extremely lucky to, to detect something that were happening in the Milky Way. So most of the things we see come from quite far away. So tell us a little bit about how, the, how this happens. So you get one, two stars in relatively close proximity in a, in a, in a star cluster that you think is pretty crowded. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a massive O-type star, the most massive type that we know. It burns out in about, I mean, it, it only lasts a million years before it goes into a core collapse stage. Is that correct? Yes. And then what happens? And then once you have a black hole, not much happens. It only <laughs> interacts gravitationally with whatever is around it. But if you have a star clusters, you can have millions of stars and black holes in a rather small volume. So things just keep moving around all the time by gravitational interaction. So by chance, this black hole can meet another black hole and get close enough to actually merge and make measurable gravitational waves. But it, let's say you have a binary system of uh, a black hole. Mm -hmm. Well, let's say you have two massive O stars. Yes. And initially, before one of them goes core collapse supernova, which means just get, they collapse onto themselves and they have so much mass, they create a black hole, not a, a white dwarf or a neutron star, mm -hmm. but a, actually a black hole. Yep. And then another main sequence hydrogen burning O-type star is relatively nearby and through what you term hydrodynamics, uh, they, they get closer. How does that happen? So this can happen when indeed you have two massive stars that form really together in a pair. One will evolve slightly faster than the other one, make a black hole. And the second one will, through its regular stellar evolution, become a giant. And often in that case, we can have the black hole that is sort of living inside the star in what we call a common envelope phase, because really they share an envelope. And so you have to imagine a black hole in this pouch of gas and then hydrodynamics basically uh, drag with because of the gas, is going to bring the black hole much closer to the other star. In reaction, 
a lot of the envelope is going to be ejected, so the other star is going to be quite smaller, but what you end up with is the two, the two objects being close. And so when your second star eventually turns into a black hole, because it's going to happen, you have two black holes that are quite nicely close to each other, and they will eventually also be able to merge and make measurable gravitational wave emission. And you think that when you have massive galaxies merging, well, like our own Milky Way is going to eventually merge with the Andromeda galaxy, not for another four to five billion years at least, I think. But uh, do you think that's one way to create stellar clusters that are so crowded that you could have many, potentially many of these stellar, these massive stellar black hole mergers? So indeed, we, we've been using simulations of these collisions of galaxies to realize that the merger of galaxies leads to intense star formation and so you can have the formation of massive clusters and in these massive clusters you can have these many random pairings of black holes so merge two black holes together and then again two others and then you can merge these two products to make something really massive that we would not be able to make otherwise and so we're thinking to use the mergers of massive black holes, like 80 times the mass of the Sun, as tracers of the mergers of much bigger things that are galaxies. Right. And so now why is this important to astrophysics? Well, it's a, it's a way to study what our universe is made of. Black holes are, the, are tracing the most fundamental things, which are stars. Everything is coming from stars. And so I think it's just a beautiful way to, to study yeah, what we're made of. So thank you so much, Astrid, for taking the time to speak to me today and on such a beautiful day. I uh, wish you luck and, and look forward to hearing more about uh, the, the uh, collaboration with with LIGO and the Japanese... Kagra. Kagra. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you.